Welcome everyone. I'm Kimberly Boschman and this is the Intentionally Intuitive Podcast. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Master Number Life Path 336. And this is the continuation of our series for Master Numbers in the Life Path. So if you are a 336, this is for you. I would recommend settling in getting cozy uh, because this might take a little while. There's a lot I want to cover with this master number. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get started. All right. So I would recommend just having a listen to the episode in my playlist. If you're on YouTube, you can find it in my uh, playlist that has to do with master numbers. If you're on my podcast, just a quick search will help you to find it, but it's titled what it means to have a master number in your life path. That's important to understand with the information that I'm going to be providing today. So have a quick listen to that. If you haven't already, uh, that will help to further sort of broaden your understanding. Now, The key to remember with all master number life paths is that your life path number is your core base number. So for you all, that's going to be six. You will step into the vibration of the six in this lifetime, and that energy is your life path number. However, you will also have many opportunities to also step into the 33, but that is negotiable and will be decided by your choices. Stepping into and mastering the energy of the 33 will come with incredible challenges and will require managing your ego to allow the soul to take the wheel. We're going to talk about that in in just a little bit about what I mean by that and sort of the journey to get there. The opportunities to step into this master number 33 can also feel too big. Uh, It can feel larger than life, almost like there's this greater purpose that you're meant to step into. You can't put your finger on it. And uh, it's sort of like this presence that's always there. And you'll likely struggle with self-doubt, even victim mentality, lack of confidence and lack of worthiness, and so much more that we sort of tell ourselves, you know, through the stories of our mind for why we're, why we can't do something or why we're not capable or why we're not worthy of something. And for the 33, the struggle can be uh, significant as you, again, move through sort of the, the lower vibration of the lower self and step into the higher vibration of the higher self as you combine or merge the vibration of your higher self with that of this very human experience and your human self. Again, we're going to talk about all that, uh, just laying the groundwork here. Uh, But you will sort of always feel that pull of the call to find a way to make it happen as far as stepping into this vibration any way you can, against all odds. And we can always say no to it uh, because we do have free will, right? Though you will likely always feel that pull, you can take the sort of quote unquote easier route to choose to stay within the vibration of the six. And choosing to do this is perfectly fine. You aren't being judged by sort of the universe or your soul if you choose to drop out of the quote unquote master's program that your soul signed up for. However, that pull towards the 33 likely won't subside and the opportunities to try again will keep coming in. Typically, we see people step into their master energy later in life. So in their 40s, their 50s, and well beyond. Everything prior to that, every test, every challenge, every triumph, every opportunity uh, is preparation to be ready to say yes to the opportunities that present that are aligned with this vibration. And those opportunities are often far reaching, meaning The work of the 33 is meant to be seen, heard, and experienced by a large population, quite likely globally in some way, shape, or form. When it comes to the vibration of the 33, you're meant to master this energy, step into the higher octave of it, and then do something significant with it, that you can have the power to impact that greater population. Though you may want to sort of rush the process, nothing about stepping into master level energy uh, can be rushed. You need 
the sort of many years of preparation and wisdom gathering all of that that wisdom in order to be able to truly step into this vibration and do more good than harm with it. So let's take a moment to explore what the actual life path number is. If you look at your full report, you'll see that there are a tremendous amount of numbers that you're working with in this lifetime. And the most significant number that sits at the very top of your chart is the life path. In their own way, all of the other numbers assist us in stepping into and mastering and then doing something beautiful with that life path number. And we have our our life path from birth to death. And typically it's new for the soul. And so we don't always resonate with it. It can feel uncomfortable uh, as we learn sort of the ins and outs of it. The life path holds all of our challenges, our triumphs, our experiences as we move through life, learning everything this vibration can teach us. So remember, for you all, that number is six. You can think of the six vibration sort of as a bachelor's degree that your soul signed up for and the 33 as the master's degree that you may or may not choose to pursue. That six isn't going anywhere though. So it's really, really important that you understand what this vibration holds for you. So before we get into the, the, the sort of nuts and bolts of the 33, let's break down the six briefly before we dive deeper. Remembering that, again, that 33 is really a magnification of the six. So this part is really, really important. So don't skip ahead. (laughs) The vibration of the six is the vibration of unconditional love, compassion, truth, and honesty. In the higher octave of the six, there is the opportunity to add beauty and love into everything that you do. The six is meant to take responsibility for their own life while also allowing everyone they meet and interact with to live their own lives the way that they choose to without judgment or criticizing their choices or their actions. The six is able to sort of hold space for their own imperfections and missteps, as well as for those of others. And the six is charged with finding a way to offer support and nurturing to any situation without feeling the need or the duty to fix it for that person or to control the outcome in any way. Acceptance is the lifeblood of the six. Acceptance for self, for others, for life, for the universe. (laughs) Knowing that what is true will always rise to the surface to be dealt with. For the six, this is a lifetime of responsibility and a large emphasis is put on family, home life, and nurturing others in some way. It's through supporting others that the six will most easily find the solutions to their own problems. When the six gets too caught up in victim mentality by feeling taken advantage of, by failing to see sort of all sides of the situation because they're too caught up in themselves, they will fall out of alignment with this vibration and they will face the consequential challenges needed to help them move back into alignment with this energy. For the six, this is not a lifetime of being overly focused on self. Everything the individual needs will be discovered and achieved through their acts of service towards others. The six must learn to be able to say no and to fill up their own cup as needed, to not allow themselves to be taken advantage of, while also continuing to show up for others in a way that is led by gratitude for the opportunity to get to do so, rather than out of any perceived obligation to do so, which can lead to resentment. So high standards without the judgment is what we're looking at here. Most sixes are very nurturing by nature and very giving. And people are often drawn to them because of this vibration, because of that energy that you naturally put out into the world. So there will always be someone who needs the support that you came here to share. Your job as a six is to make sure that you're offering that support 
and saying yes for the right reasons. Otherwise, it's serving no one and it's only wasted energy. The six is meant to say yes when it feels good and no when it doesn't. When the six needs to say no, that can be the most loving, supportive thing that you can do for all involved that will actually produce the best results. By saying no, you actually give the other person the opportunity to find a resource that is capable of saying yes with gratitude at that time. And you allow yourself the opportunity to get replenished body, mind, spirit, so that you're ready to say yes to the next person that comes in knocking at your door. And again, you can do give that support with gratitude and gratitude for the opportunity to be able to do so. You are not responsible to say yes to situations where you are being mistreated, used, and abused. And you must learn to say no to those situations where you feel that way. And it's, it's your, it's, it is your responsibility. It's our responsibility as humans to, again, have those higher standards and to recognize if we feel taken advantage of, then it's up to us to say no to those situations. And there's sort of this lifelong journey for the six to gauge that and figure out how they feel about situations, how they feel about saying yes, how they feel about saying no, and to find their, their center within that process. Again, when you say yes to being in service or being of service to someone and their needs and to be supportive of someone, to get the most out of that and to be within the highest vibration of that six, you have to be saying yes because you want to, because you're doing so out of the graciousness of your heart and you're doing so with gratitude for the opportunity to do so. If you don't feel that gratitude for the opportunity to say yes, then you need to say no, because otherwise you're going to end up with resentment, frustration, anger, feeling uh, taken advantage of, etc. The vibration of the six can naturally be very optimistic and idealistic, but a big part of the journey is to sort of reconcile your high ideals with the practical reality of the situation. Again, to accept yourself and others where they are at in this moment, in the present moment, not to be looking at the situation with the rose colored glasses or looking at people's potential and then having those expectations that they'll be able to meet you there, but rather seeing people as they are in this moment seeing the reality of the situation as it is in this moment, while also maintaining those high ideals and that optimistic nature. So you're meant to manage your expectations of self and others while finding ways to also infuse love into the moment, no matter what things look like from your perspective in that moment. Because this is such a strong nurturing lifetime, the six can often fall into the mode of overgiving, especially of themselves. So it becomes sort of self-sacrificial a lot of times. As mentioned, this is not a self-centric lifetime, but it is also not a lifetime for self-neglect and deprivation or depletion. The six must learn to find their balance between caring for others and caring for self. To, to learn to receive as much as you give and to take up ample space within relationships and connections. The goal is for an equal exchange of energy where all involved are able to bring their strengths to the table while also receiving support where they have weaknesses. So as with any of the numbers, extremes are always going to be detrimental. For you, this is a lifetime for nurturing and supporting others but it has to feel good for you. Again, we talked about this and this is so critical for the six. It has to feel good. Otherwise you're doing it for the wrong reasons and you will be disappointed. You will feel taken advantage of and eventually you will feel depleted. Giving and nurturing is a strength for you and it should fulfill you. If it doesn't, then check your reasons for saying yes in the first place. It's likely that that yes should have been a no. Giving and supporting and nurturing should feel good and aligned. If it doesn't, check your why. 
as in why you said yes in the first place. Did you really want to say no? Saying no won't be easy, especially with people who are used to you always saying yes. However, once you find your equilibrium with this saying no and when to say yes, not only will you feel better, but what you'll be able to offer others when you do say yes will be far more significant. As I mentioned earlier, sixes and of course 33s can fall easily into victim mentality frustrated that they're being taken advantage of, that they're underappreciated and feel unseen by others. They can grow resentful and cynical of the situation of others of themselves because they felt uh, that all that they're giving is rarely reciprocate, reciprocated or little gratitude is shown for their good deeds and their service. This victim mentality only keeps the six stuck and sort of stewing in resentments that can cause more harm than necessary. When the six finds themselves here, the best thing that they can do is to reflect upon why they said yes to someone or something in the first place that sort of makes them feel this way. And how in the future can they handle that situation differently? How could they say no instead of yes and sort of stand behind that no and feel good about it? If we keep showing up to someone who doesn't appreciate us, expecting them to start appreciating us, then we're giving our power away. You always have the choice to say yes or no to how you share your energy. And only we have the power to change our experiences. We can take our power back without anger, resentment, or judgment, and with love, all with a simple no. It's that simple. Well, I say it's that simple. It's actually quite difficult for sixes because of that really giving, nurturing uh, energy. And so usually for a six and a 33, it becomes really difficult to sort of have those higher standards and truly embody them and to be able to say no and people to be upset with them, that sort of thing. And so again, it becomes this finding your strength and your courage to be able to do that and to be, be able to move through the uncomfortableness of other people's reactions to that no, right? To find your worth and to understand that without that no, you will be depleted at some point. You will be in a place of resentment at some point um, because you're not saying yes out of the graciousness and the goodness of your heart. You're saying yes out of obligation. And that never turns out uh, balanced without some, some modification. So it is a journey and I say it's simple, but honestly, it's not really simple for any human, let alone a six or 33 six. So because the six is such a caring and nurturing energy, it's easy for those with this life path to become without intention, controlling, self-righteous, and a bit overbearing to those they are trying to help. They tend to want to fix the situation or find the best solution and the six can become frustrated when others don't listen to their advice uh, or when they choose to do things differently. The six just needs to remember that being nurturing and supportive does not mean taking over and doing for the person. It's about picking them up when they fall without judgment for why they fell or if they fall repeatedly, not you know having judgment for that, that repetition, <laughs> It's about creating that beautiful, loving space for the other person to catch their breath to try again. Sometimes the six will want to take over, but the only journey you have control over is your own. You do best when you are providing the warming hut and the nutrients for other hikers on their own path. You can't walk that path for them, but you can help them to find the strength to keep going. Okay, so now that you sort of have a good idea of your core life path number, again, that is the six, let's break down that 33. This is one of the rarest master numbers, and in my opinion, the hardest to step into. Now, if you have, and there's three calculations that we use for uh, to determine your master number. 
And if you show a master number in any three of those calculations, my belief is that you will feel the strong influence of the 33 and you are on that path. Um, And that is rare to have 33 in any of the calculations. What is even more rare is to have the 33 in all of three of the calculations. Uh, And that when you have that, and again, that's very rare to see that. But if you do, if you're someone who's listening and you do have that, where you have it across all three calculations, just know that this is probably a lifetime for you where that 33 is much less negotiable. You will likely face a tremendous amount of challenges and sort of this feeling of being pushed into this life path by your by your soul. And I would say anybody with the life path 33 probably feels that. But if you have it across all three calculations, that is incredibly rare. And your soul is really, really like determined to step into this 33 in this lifetime. And I think you will feel that and will feel pushed to, to step into that. Uh, where others, it's going to be, like I said, you'll always sort of feel that push and that sort of bigger presence of something that you're meant to step into. But it will be a little bit easier for those who have the 33 in one or two calculations to probably say no to it and stay in the six vibration, which is totally fine. Uh, But I wanted to mention that because if you're someone who has it across all three calculations, just know that you're probably going to be feeling it every step of the way to really step into it. Okay, so why do I think this is the hardest life path to step into? Let's talk about it. So each life path comes with incredible challenges, right? And especially each master number comes with incredible challenges. But with the 33, you all are being asked to not only step into, but to fully embody something that is nearly impossible for humans with our egos to do. And that is to step into and fully embody the vibration of unconditional love without sacrificing self in order to do so. So in order to embody unconditional love and to truly show up in that vibration with others, you must first embrace it for yourself. And this sounds easy enough, but it goes beyond convincing ourselves that we're there or simply saying it out loud. It comes down to how we treat ourselves, how we speak to ourselves. Do we accept ourselves? Do we accept our imperfections, our mistakes, our missteps, and everything that we sort of um, beat ourselves up about? How forgiving of ourselves are we? How much grace do we show ourselves? Do we feel worthy of love, respect, abundance, etc.? Do our actions reflect that? Are we able to see the divinity within ourselves? And if we fall out of unconditional love with ourselves, how quickly do we come back into alignment? Unconditional love is not a love driven by ego or this human experience. It is a vibration of the highest frequency that our highest self is always vibrating at, but that is incredibly foreign to our lower human self. Unconditional love is love without conditions or expectations where forgiveness, grace, compassion, and generosity come quickly without the mind ever needing to get involved. It's a love driven by the soul and it only ever involves the heart not the mind. If we have to think about it, it isn't unconditional love. If we need validation for it, it isn't unconditional love. If we have expectations or conditions around it, then it isn't unconditional love. We humans go through many experiences where we feel that unconditional love and we align with it, but it's often fleeting And we struggle to find our way back to it, especially when things don't go our way or when we're faced with a challenge or an obstacle that sort of tests this in some way, right? 
or when we have those expectations or conditions and those expectations and conditions are not met by ourselves or by others. When we're truly in the vibration of unconditional love and we embody it, there is little that can disrupt that that frequency. And if something does disrupt it, then we're able to find our way back to it very, very quickly. And that's how we know that we've embodied it. And again, it's not someone that someone else can say, you're in it, you've embodied it, you're good to go, right? Though other people will feel it from your your presence, and we'll talk about that, and your actions will reflect it, but nobody can tell you or gauge whether you are in this vibration. Only you will know, and you will not need the validation from anyone else outside of yourself to know. It becomes a very personal journey where when we're in that vibration, we know it and we don't have to prove it to anyone. We don't have to, you know, take out a billboard to announce it. We simply move in that energy. We simply embody it. And then we take action that becomes love in action. And our presence is enough. It's not about the validation. And that's really, really important to understand. If we're seeking validation, to say, look how loving I am, look how enlightened I am, look how, et cetera, et cetera. That's coming from the place of the ego and that's not coming from the place of the soul. The soul does not need validation for its purity. It simply is and is a presence because of that being. And that's so much of what the 33 is meant to step into. When we're in the vibration of unconditional love, again, there is no competition, no jealousy, no remorse, no regret, no anger, frustration, or pettiness. We can only see the divinity within self and others, and our actions clearly reflect that effortlessly. The reason why stepping into the vibration is so difficult for humans is because of our ego, which we need this, our ego in this human experience. And the conditioning that we receive since birth contributes to why we have become so separated from our true nature, our true core, which is unconditional love. We've been taught the ways of conditional love, of ownership and expectations, I love you if, for ourselves and others. So the journey of the 33 becomes one of unlearning those patterns and breaking free from the rules, regulations, and restrictions around love in order to fully step into this vibration in human form, to meet your higher self and to carry that pure vibration of unconditional love through your human self into this world that needs it more than ever. But that is not ready for it. This world is not ready for it meaning that you will face opposition every step of the way, but you're meant to say yes and keep going no matter what it takes. And one thing I want to just mention is I talked about how with this vibration of unconditional love, there's no competition, jealousy, remorse, regret, anger, etc. That doesn't mean that you won't feel those emotions, right? You are human. You will feel the emotions, But when we're in the vibration of unconditional love, they come in and we transmute them very quickly. We're able to channel them into something more constructive and something more healthy and positive, right? But it's not about bypassing our emotions, suppressing our emotions, etc. We are emotive beings. But for someone who is a 33 or anybody who is able to step into this vibration and maintain the vibration, when those lower vibrations come in, when those charged energies of the emotions come in, the 33 or someone who is in this vibration, the vibration of unconditional love, is able to sort of diffuse that charged emotion very quickly. They're able to feel it, acknowledge it, honor it, move through it, transmute it, and move on. It does not become something that starts to fester, that that sort of derails the individual. And again, when we are working with an ego, which again, we all have, the ego is about safety and keeping us safe, a perceived island of safety, right? Which usually is not what is cracked up to be. And so the ego 
pushes against, you know, this, this higher vibration of the soul because it's caught in this 3D physical reality. So this is why it becomes so incredibly difficult to step into the vibration of unconditional love and to maintain it, to manage it, right? Um, and, and to be able to do that while also being very present and very uh, and experiencing this very human experience. So that is why it becomes so incredibly challenging. We see with animals a lot of times, right? Like like dogs and, and cats or horses or whatever, like animals that, um, you know, we're very close to. These animals are unconditioning loving by nature. It's just their nature, right? And the reason for that is because they don't have an ego. They're able to be in that consistently because they don't have the ego. And again, that's why for humans, it becomes one of the most most difficult thing to step into, and maintain in this lifetime. Um, it's easy when things are going as planned. It's easy when things are going as we want them to go, right? Again, conditional. But when things go south, when th- when we are faced with that opposition, when we are faced with tra- uh, travesty, when we are faced with chaos, that's when it's the hardest to step into and maintain and embody. And that's what the, the 33 is really being asked to do is to step into it and embody it where it becomes your presence, how you move through the world, no matter what you're faced with. And again, I acknowledge that it's incredibly difficult to to do that, to step into that, especially on planet Earth, which is one of the most difficult schools in the universe. So uh, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big feat. And that's why, again, I feel like this is the hardest life path to step into or the hardest vibration, the 33. Now, once the 33 does step into and embody the vibration of unconditional love for themselves, then by default, they become a presence that has the power to bring a tremendous amount of love and beauty into the world and into every thing that they touch and everywhere that they go. When we have unconditional love for ourselves, we cannot help but to have it for every single other living being that we meet because we understand that energetically, we are all one. We are all divine. We come from the same source. So quite literally, how we treat ourselves will be exactly how we treat another all living beings. Now, the keynote of the 33 is a feeling. It's a presence. It's not necessarily something tangible, though what you you create with that love, with that beauty, can be something tangible. And people reading it or seeing it can feel that vibration of love that's infused within whatever that is. So that's very possible. But at the end of the day, what you're being asked to step into is a vibration, is a feeling, is a presence. When you've stepped into this master number, your gift to the world is quite literally you, (laughs) your presence, because your presence will be one of love, acceptance, grace, forgiveness, understanding, and peace. And understand that this is not something that is forced. This is something that is embodied. It just becomes the way that you move through the world and it's done in peace, right? There's a feeling of fulfillment. There's a feeling of gratitude and joy. And again, it's not something that's forced and it's certainly not something that needs validation in order to to, to be in that vibration. If we're seeking um, validation, then remember, this is coming from the ego and not the soul, and we're likely not there yet. That vibration, once you're in it, will be felt by everyone in your presence or in the presence of your work, right? So if you create something, for instance, a book, or, um, you know, you're a motivational speaker or whatever, or, um, you know, I don't, whatever you're called to, whatever you create while you're in this vibration of unconditional love, is going to be infused with that love. So everyone who has access to that work has access to that vibration. 
So whatever way you choose to express yourself creatively, that love will be at the core of it. And that has the power to lift the vibration of the planet and raise the consciousness of the planet simply by being you when you're in this energy. And that's why the 33 is such an incredibly beautiful gift to this world. It truly, truly is. And we all have the potential to step into this vibration, right? It's not that the 33 is better than in any way, shape, or form. It's just that the 33 is on a mission in this lifetime to truly step into and embody this vibration and then lead by example to be that presence so that others can feel it, so that others can experience it in this lifetime. And then hopefully make decisions to also move move towards stepping into that vibration. So it's not that the 33 are the only ones who are able to do this by any means. We're all capable of doing this. But you all in this lifetime chose to be sort of the leader and to, uh, again, lead by example. But again, it's not something that we can consciously say, okay, I'm in this vibration and now I'm going to teach it or I'm going to lead by example. It's, it's that embodiment. It's stepping into it and feeling it with every core of your being. And that becomes your presence. And that presence is what will move mountains. Now, the journey into the vibration of the 33 is obviously not for the faint of heart. However, I will say as a 33-6, nobody is more equipped to achieve this in this lifetime other than you. Now, again, we are all capable of it, but you all are, are on a mission. Your soul is on a mission to step into this, to embody it, and then to share it with the world so the, the world can experience it and know that they are worthy of it, meaning that vibration of unconditional love. We are all, we are all worthy of stepping into that in this lifetime. And the reason why we're all worthy is because at the core of every single living being is this vibration of unconditional love. It's just that for so many, it's masked. And for you all, it's about taking off that mask and shining that light and being that beacon for others to show them that it is possible. It is absolutely possible to move from conditional love to unconditional love and to truly embody that vibration. Is it easy? No. Is it easy in this world? Absolutely not. (laughs) Uh, That's why I say it's not for the faint of heart. But it's what your soul signed up for in this lifetime. And you all are more than capable of, of achieving that and to have a tremendous impact in this lifetime. You all came here on this planet at this specific time in history with this mission in mind uh, for a very specific reason. And I believe the reason is because the world needs it more now than ever. So you will have to first step into the six as we had discussed previously. And throughout that journey, you'll learn how to put the ego in the passenger seat and allow the soul to drive. You'll face unspeakable challenges that will likely confront you with where you tend to be self-righteous, judgmental, in victim mentality, giving your power away, being controlling, and so, so much more. You'll be asked to forgive the most unthinkable acts when it comes to forgiving self, others, and the universe. You'll likely experience great loss on this journey. That's something that I see with a lot of 33s is significant loss um, because the soul knows that grief can be our greatest teacher, especially on the road to unconditional love. So you will likely face great injustices at the hands of others, especially from those closest to your heart, because the sixth vibration is so much associated with, again, love, family, friends, close-knit community. So for the 33, you will likely face those great injustices at the hands of those you trust, you love, um, that you have those expectations for in order to learn what it truly means to forgive and to find your way back to that unconditional love, love without conditions. Reminder that unconditional love does not in any way, shape, or form translate to self-sacrifice or tolerating abuse, mistreatment, or poor behavior. 
unconditional love for self, especially, means treating self with love and care at all times, no matter what. So we go back to what we talked about previously with the six and having those high standards, knowing when to say yes and when to say no, caring for self as much as you care for others. And that is an expression of unconditional love, especially for self. And then remember, if we have unconditional love for self, we by default will have unconditional love for everyone that we meet. When you fall into victim mentality, you'll be asked to pause long enough to figure out where you do have power within the situation. And you will need to take your power back, move through it, and hold on to the wisdom gained through that process. How do you act or react when things don't go your way? If you feel underappreciated, are you the victim or are you being asked to love yourself and respect yourself more by saying no to those situations and those people in the future until things change? This vibration can be so empowering because it reminds you that most times people aren't doing anything to us. It's just that we have to learn what we will accept for ourselves and to understand that we ourselves can do better in what we accept for ourselves, right? And what we say yes to and what we say no to. We always at the end of the day have a choice and we always have that power. Sometimes when we fall into victim mentality though, we can forget where our power lies. And the 33 does a great job of reminding us where that power is. We just have to take action. So at the end of the day, the main purpose of the 33 is to not just talk about love and peace, but to be love and peace and to lead by example, to become the authentic uh, presence of love that truly has the power to change this world, all while giving yourself grace as you fall in and out of love along the way. And so what's interesting is, you know, and we talk about being love and being peace. And again, it's not something that can be forced. It's not something that can be found. It's something that life is going to continue to present you with the challenges, with the opportunities to be confronted with where it is that you are not in this vibration. And then you need to move through those challenges and those obstacles and say yes to those opportunities. And through that process, you will slowly and surely be stepping into that vibration. So again, it's not something that can be learned. It can definitely come with aha moments. So there can be things that peak our awareness and that bring us into greater awareness about ourselves and where it is that we are out of this outside of this vibration. And then we can do the work to overcome the barriers that keep us from this vibration, such as self-defeating thoughts, how we treat ourselves, how we view you know life and others as well as ourselves. So it becomes that journey. And that's why I say that 33 cannot be rushed to step into. It's something that life will give you everything that you need in training and preparation to be able to step into this, but it's not going to come easily. And it's not going to be, it's not going to come without work and effort because it's going to take that in order to step into a vibration that is so pure and um, highly vibrational we have to sort of move through the experiences that show us what love is not so that we can recognize what love truly is. And for the 33, you all are on the sort of this crash course and this intensive course of figuring that out. And that's why things can seem so challenging and so difficult, especially when it comes to emotions. And that's why I say 33s will often go through things that really, really, you know, are deep, hit them to the core, that they really have to find ways to move through and come to peace with and come to terms with and find forgiveness with for themselves, others and the universe, etc. So it's incredibly, incredibly difficult for so many reasons, not just because of the ego, but also because we are emotive beings and emotions are charged energy. And until we learn how to work with and move with that charged energy and honor it and transmute it, it can be in control of our journey. And for the 33, so much of this journey is really about 
sort of mastering those emotions, not suppressing, not overriding, not bypassing, but truly working with their emotions in a way that their emotions work for them as opposed to against them. So I'm going to repeat that last paragraph one more time. At the end of the day, the main purpose of the 33 is not to just talk about love and peace, but to be love and peace and lead by example to become the authentic presence of love that truly, truly has the power to change this world, all while giving yourself grace as you fall in and out of love along the way. Okay. Now then let's take a few moments to sort of break down those double threes because you have double threes for that 33, because those are really significant. That three vibration is super significant to this, this 33 energy. Remember though, the six will feel most comfortable sort of at home in a home environment or surrounded by close knit community, friends, loved ones, etc. But the 33 is meant to be felt, seen, experienced by a large population. So by stepping into that 33 vibration, you will absolutely be asked to step outside of your comfort zone in the most authentic way possible in order to shine, 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 all while finding your joy in the process. Now then, the vibration of the three, and you have a double dose of those threes, is very much centered around joy, imagination, childlike wonder, optimism, idealism, authenticity, uniqueness, and of course, creativity. With these double threes, you are meant to hold your idyllic vision for a better world and then communicate and collaborate with others in order to create that vision in a way that feels true for you. This is a big, larger than life energy that doesn't settle for minimizing who we are in order to fit in. For a three, fitting in and conforming are boring. (laughs) So evolution happens through creation and uniqueness by authentic people sharing and expressing themselves authentically while celebrating others doing the same. The three is always begging us to find our joy through our creative process and by being exactly who we are in this moment, expressing ourselves in a way that feels freeing and all our own. When we feel joy because of the experience that we're in, that we have created for ourselves, then other people get to experience that joy as well. And I would argue that some of the strongest forces in the universe are love, joy, and creation. And you 33s came in this beautiful package capable of tapping into all three, no pun intended, and showing us how it's done. So what makes this even more challenging to step into at times is because similar to love, humans are often conditioned early on to be serious, to be practical, and to do what will be successful, especially in the Western world, and not necessarily do what is fulfilling. And we stop connecting with our inner child. We only have time for creativity and, and things that light us up as a hobby. And being silly and joyful are reserved for weekends only. So the three and the 33 are charged with helping us to shift our perspectives and get our priorities straight. One of the challenges of the 33 is to continue to find joy amidst the challenges and the chaos of life. And as we discussed, there will be plenty of those. So, you know, it it becomes that sort of double, I don't want to say double edged sword, but that conundrum where it's like, you know, you are meant to embody this vibration of love. You are meant to you know, be idealistic and optimistic and find your joy. But you are also going to be moving through some of the most, I don't want to say devastating experiences, but they can be incredibly difficult experiences. And part of the journey, part of the preparation is to find that, that vibration of joy, even amidst that, um, yeah, potential devastation, potential difficulty. And that can be incredibly challenging, all while not bypassing your emotions, right? Like feeling everything and experiencing everything, but continuing to sort of see that that silver lining and hold on to it and know that 
you know, keep that hope and, and know that something better is coming. Um, and finding that pure bliss and that pure joy alongside of it. Because humans are very nuanced. We're very complicated creatures. We are very capable of being elated and joyful and devastated and sad at the same time. It's one of those things. And it's sort of one of those things that kind of keeps us going through some of the more devastating experiences, to be honest. And 33s are sort of gifted in this area. And I don't know if you're sort of gifted as soon as you come out of the womb type of thing, but life certainly prepares you to acknowledge and appreciate that gift of finding that joy, even amidst the challenges of life. And to truly grab onto it and to experience it and live it. So the reason for this is because where there is joy, there is creation. And where there is joy and creativity, there is love. So you all are meant to embody all three and be that beautiful presence of light energy simply by your presence. And that presence will encourage others to tap into that same light of their own. So imagine if the world ran on love, joy, and creativity. What an incredible world this would be. And you 33 sixes are the torchbearers reminding us all of who we truly are beneath the illusion of this very human 3D reality. Which brings me to an important point to mention we are all divine. Every soul is enlightened and pure. So we do not need to strive to achieve that. This lifetime is not about sort of rising above the human experience. We are meant to fully experience this human, you know, lifetime. And we're meant to truly acknowledge it and be present for it. We are not meant to bypass it. The goal is not to become so spiritually enlightened that we don't have to sort of be present in this human experience because the soul is already enlightened. We've, we've already checked that box. We're good. But in human form with our egos, we're meant to connect with our higher self, which is already enlightened and, and we're meant to bring that energy down into this human experience to enhance this journey while we're here, to bring that light through us and to create heaven on earth for ourselves and everyone that we meet along the way. And the more that we can learn about ourselves and our very much needed ego, the more that we'll know what to do with our light once we're ready to shine it. And the 33 is very much the sort of the, the the leader in this process or is meant to be the leader to show us how to remember who we are, to tap into that and to allow it to enhance this human experience and to really, again, help to raise the consciousness of this planet. So my point is don't spiritually bypass yourself. Be present, find your joy here on earth and then share that joy with everyone that you meet. And those double 33s are really helping you to do that, to push you outside of your comfort zone, to, to connect with your inner child, to remember who you are, and to find your joy in the process, for, to find your joy for simply having this opportunity to be alive, to be in physical form, and to be able to be on one of the greatest schools in the universe, I think, you know, if it were meant to, if it was easy, then, you know, we wouldn't have the soul growth that we're capable of achieving in this, in this lifetime. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't be able to sort of experience ourselves in human form and to really truly experience life. And so, so much of the 33 vibration and the three is about truly seeing the beauty of that, seeing the beauty of having this short period of time on this planet to, you know, move through the challenges and to learn what we can learn, but to also truly experience all the beauty that this planet offers, you know, nature, the animals, like the, you know, the air, the sky, the sun, you name it, like being able to see the stars and, you know, all the things, the imagination, just 
yeah, there's so much beauty to uncover. And it can be hard to remember that when you're in the thick of it and when you're moving through, you know, really challenging events that are opening you up emotionally, that are helping you to be fully open and vulnerable in all of the things. So it's it's definitely incredibly beautiful. It's really, truly one of the most beautiful vibrations, the 33. Um, but it certainly comes with a long road to get there. But once you're there, you know, I don't know how to, I can't emphasize this enough. Once you're in that vibration, if you choose to go into that vibration, you know, through the journey, through overcoming the challenges and extracting the wisdom and then using that wisdom, when you step into that vibration, your your presence is going to be one that can absolutely change this world just by being who you are. And that is what you're being prepared for with this vibration. And that is what your soul chose to really step into in this lifetime. And I just don't know if there's anything more beautiful. It's really, truly reminding every human that you come into contact, every being, but every human really, that you come into contact, that they are divine, unconditional love at their core. And they'll be reminded of that simply by being in your presence when you are, when you embody this this energy and that will be shown through your actions through how you move through the world how you view the world how you view yourself all of those things so yeah i mean not to you know i, I hate to say this because it, it does make it sound like the 33 is a vibration that's better than or holier than thou. And it's not that at all. It's just we all came with our own gifts and our own purpose to really sort of ignite uh, love on this planet. And for the 33, your your ultimate goal in this lifetime, and it's not something, again, that can be forced or taught or um, manipulated. It's something that will you will step into and embody when you've learned the lessons of how to do that, right? through the challenges, etc. But once you do, if you do in this lifetime, then you will truly be this, the merging of your higher self and enlightened being in physical form. And that is so powerful and so beautiful. And the world really needs it. So big, big, big shoes to fill. And that's why I say, you know, it's, it's one of the hardest life paths. I think it's probably the hardest uh, vibration to step into. It's certainly one of the most beautiful, in my opinion. And yeah, it's it's very, and that's why it's so rare, right? So beautiful, beautiful energy. I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, and it's just, I acknowledge the journey. I really, truly do. And in, And if you do choose to stay in the sixth vibration, you know what? That's just as beautiful because that's also a beautiful vibration. So yeah. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you know, keep going, keep shining 33 sixes because we need your light on earth more than ever, more than ever. So if you want to book some time with me, you're welcome to do so. I work with so many master numbers. Master numbers and karmic numbers are such a majority of my clientele and returning clientele because of this journey, right? And so with the applied numerology, we can work with any questions that you have, any roadblocks that you're moving through, your cycles, like different things that you could be facing that if you need some extra confirmation, clarity, guidance on, I'm here to help. You can book some time with me. My information is in the description box below. Um, But if not, just know that I am 100% one of your biggest cheerleaders, and I'm over here rooting for you every step of the way. So take care, 33s. I hope this was beneficial and helpful for you, and I wish you so much love and peace and joy and luck on your journey. Take care. Bye for now.